So and see what actually happens when you free memory. In this example, we are calling malloc. Let's say in the first malloc, we request memory to the operating system. What happens when we free that and then enter the next iteration? Do we reuse the memory or do we request more memory from the operating system? Your malloc probably doesn't do this, which just requests more memory all the time because, well, there's probably a lot of overhead for this. So this is what it might do. First, we'll go to the free implementation. So instead of returning the memory to the operating system every time, well, there's probably a check. If the memory is very large, you would probably want to return it to the operating system. But instead of doing that, we cache the memory so that when we call malloc, another malloc after free, we will first check if we can avoid trying to get more memory. So in malloc, we can first check the free list. And if it's not empty, we traverse the list and then try to find enough memory or the block of memory that fits the size we need. If we find a chunk that fits, then we'll return that memory. Otherwise, we will need to get more memory from the operating system. And for example, if we have a malloc and then free, and then another malloc call, and then another free, what might actually happen here is when we call the first free, we will add it to the free list, and then in the second malloc, before requesting more memory from the operating system, I will try to find a chunk of freed memory that fits some size two. Perhaps it will reuse P1. And then when we free the second time, we'll add it again to the list, just like the first free. So yeah, 